Okay, so this video is the second part of the topic binomial theorem. So again, we are going to discuss some NAST entry test sample questions which are related to the topic binomial theorem. In the first part, we have discussed some questions and this is the second part. So we have to start with 11th question. Okay, now in the 11th question we have the number of terms in the expansion of a plus b to the n, where n belongs to z class that is positive integers is. Now again, this is a property and we have been discussing this in the first part as well, that if n, if the power is n, the number of terms would be n plus one, because we start with, let's say b to the zero and we go till b to the n. This means that we have in total n plus one terms okay now let's discuss the 12th question the general term in the expansion of a plus b to the power n is denoted by t r plus one so okay now this means that we're talking about the r plus one term right and i've been discussing that if let's say we are interested in finding out the 20th term, R would be 20. So if we are interested in finding out R plus one, R would be 20. And we know that we need to use this. So we will have A to the N minus R, B to the R. So this is the answer, right? So, Let's talk about the 13th question. The index in a minus b to the power 17 is, okay, so this is the power that basically is the index. So this implies that 17 is the answer. Now you guys must be noticing that these questions are very easy. It is because in NET, we are going to have a combination of questions, right? Some would be easy, some would be difficult, we have to be very careful while managing time just so we allocate time appropriately and we have good enough time for questions that are genuinely difficult, okay? So for these, and yes, these questions would be difficult for those who um, are not prepared with the properties and theorems. So you guys have to make sure that you know all the definitions, theorems and properties for NET. Okay, so let's talk about the 14th question. The sum of odd coefficients in the binomial expansion of this where n belongs to z plus is equal to, okay, now in this question, we have been asked to find the sum of odd coefficients. So what do we do? Do we just expand in sum of everything? No, this again is a property. I told you that total sum of coefficients in binomial expansion is 2n. This is the total sum, right? And if we talk about odd and even terms, so we have, were told that the sum of odd coefficients is equal to the sum of even coefficients. So if I talk about odd, if we have 2n in general, so I will do 2n divided by 2. So that would make it 2 to the n minus 1. Okay. Now we have some more questions. Okay. Now this is the 15th question. The third term in the expansion of one plus x, one plus six divided by x to the power one by three is. Now again, in this question, it's very simple. We need to expand using n equals 1 by 3 and we have to find the third term okay so for doing this question we have to use the formula the general formula for 1 plus x to the power n is 
one plus n x plus n into n minus one divided by two factorial into x square. Okay, so this is the first term, second term, third term. We have to focus on this term. And this time our n is one by three, n minus one would be minus two by three. And we don't have x, we have six by x. So x is basically six by x to the power two. So this is going to make it minus 12 by nine. In fact, we have minus two into 36 because we have six square into x square. So this is going to give me Okay, so finally we will have one and four. That is minus four by x squared. So the answer would be minus four by x squared. This is the answer. Okay, so at times students think that we have a different power, like power is not a whole number. So what do we do? We need to use the same formula, just like I did, okay? So this is the general formula. We need to use our particular values, that is n, x, and other things would be same. We have to simplify and we will get this as the answer. Okay. Let's talk about the next question. Okay. If x be so small that its square and higher powers may be neglected, then okay. Now we need to find out this. So let's do that. Now in this question, let's just state the question first over here. So we have one minus X to the power one by two. Then we have nine minus 4x to the power 1 by 2 and we have 8 plus 3x to the power 1 by 3. Now again I am going to expand but only till x because square and higher powers may be neglected. This is important okay? and we need to save time. And this is why we have this question in NET because they have been, uh, they have made the question very simple by saying this, okay? So we have one minus X one by two. So this is going to give me one plus N X. Okay, so what is N? N is one by two and we have minus X. Okay, so this is why I got this. Then for the second one, we will have a to the n. So a is 9 and 9 to the 1 by 2. Then we have plus 9 a to the n minus 1 that would make it 1 by 2 minus 1 that is minus 1 by 2 into b that is minus 4x okay now since this 1 by 3 was in the denominator so we will make it minus 1 by 3 when it becomes to numerator so once we have it in numerator it will be minus 1 by 3 and finally we are going to have A to the minus 1 by 3 plus minus 1 by 3 
into eight n minus one that would be minus one by three minus one that makes it eight to the minus four by three into d that is three x in our case. Okay, so I'm just expanding it using the simple formula. So I am going to get one minus one by two x into n to the power one by two is basically three plus one by two into one by three into minus four x multiplied by eight to the power one minus one by three is going to give me one by two minus one by three will come as it is then this factor is one by sixteen into three x and finally we will just cancel out three and three this two with four, we'll get two only. And this is pretty much it. We'll write down the values now. This will give me one minus one by two x multiplied by three minus two by three. x and the last term would be 1 by 2 minus 1 by 16 x okay once i have once i have my three factors i need to multiply first let's just multiply these two factors so this will give me Okay, so we need to check this. This is going to give me three. One into three is three simply. Then one into minus two by three X is minus two by three X, then I will have minus three by two X. And how did I get this factor? By multiplying this with this. Do I multiply this factor with this factor? No, when I multiply these two, I'll get X square and X square and higher powers are neglected because X is very small, right? So we'll just write down this one. That is one by two minus 16 X. And this is going to give me three into one by two, that is three by two. Then 3 into minus 1 by 16x, that would be minus 3 by 16x. Then I will get 
minus 2 by 3 into 1 by 2. So that would make it minus 1 by 3x. And finally, I will get minus 3 by 4x by multiplying this factor with this factor. Okay. And this is going to give me, let's check out the answers now. So we have 3 by 2. Then we need to add minus 3 divided by 16, minus 1 divided by 3, and minus 3 divided by 4. Because these are the terms with x, and this is going to give me minus 61 by 48x. So let's check these out. It is 3 by 2 is the constant term and minus 61 by 48. So this is the answer. Now, in this question, obviously, the calculation was wrong, but we have to make sure that we don't waste our time in multiplying, you know, such factors, x with x, because this is going to give me square. And they have mentioned this clearly, that square and higher powers may be neglected, which means that we need to focus on x only. This is why in all the choices, we had x, 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 and x, right? Okay, and as soon as we got our 3 by 2, which we did, we should just cancel out this and this option, okay? Because in NET and in most of the entry test exams, we have MCQs. So whenever we have MCQs, even if you're not sure about the answer, we can still make conclusions about which option could certainly uh, be not the answer, right? So just cross out those options and then at the end, we would be left with the right one so that would be the choice. Obviously, this method would be time taking, but in some of the MCUs, this would be very helpful. So we are done with these questions.